Rachel Morgan, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Shall we begin, sir? Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the 11th webinar of the KCHR webinar series, a review of the idols of the Buddha, uh, the enlightened profounder, Shasta, the guardian deity, and Shabrimala Ayyappa, the tribal ancestral deity from iconographical perspective by Professor Dr. Ajit Kumar. Um, I request all of you to kindly keep your microphones on mute while the presentation is on. The, your questions and queries to the speaker may be typed in the chat box, which will be read out after the presentation. I request Professor Kartikey and I, Director KCHR, to please take over the proceedings. Thank you, sir. Dear Professor Rajit Kumar, all member participants and uh, well wishers of the KCHR, you are all welcome to the webinar series. Today, Professor Rajit Kumar is presenting a very interesting topic, an idol which has become an international figure in recent years. Our Shabarimala idol or cult is, has, a, has an international reputation and in recent years it has become a controversial issue also. But as students of history and uh, practitioners of history, we would like to uh, go to the details, the intricacies of the idol, its iconographic importance, apart from the social and uh, uh, religious relevance that it had in the Kerala society. And how did it become an idol which uh, had attracted the reputation and uh, attention or attraction of the people outside Kerala and from now outside India also. We know that uh, Kerala had a rich tradition of Buddhist uh, influence, Buddhist and Jain influence. And before the Brahmin occupation, Brahminical occupation of Kerala, occupation not in the real sense, but a, a small scale in infiltration, etc. And Kerala's uh, society, social life was uh, regulated by the Buddhist order. Even the Shasta cult, it is uh, uh, the, the etymological meaning of Shasta is that uh, something on who uh, this uh, advises. Shasta means uh, on who advises. Shasi Kuga in Malayalam, Shasi Kuga means advising. So the eightfold path of the Buddha, it is a social and ethical code, social, moral, and ethical code which regulated the people of Kerala for centuries together. And it was uh, uh, this uh, topsy turvied by the Vedic infiltration with the uh, Sanskrit literature and uh, Vedic philosophy. And even today, we are having are influencing such a thing the, the script of the Malayalam language, which is derived from uh, Brahmi script, as such as in such as It is not proper on my part to speak of anything more on that because. Uh, the Brahmi script developed by the Ashokan Brahmi, which uh, now comes to the South Indian, the, the Kini Brahmi or the Kan Brahmi or South Indian Brahmi, and from which our language, Malayalam language, has a script developed. So, to that extent, goes the influence of uh, uh, Buddha and Buddhism to Kerala life. Now, Sri Ajitko, Dr. Ajitko Kumar is uh, trying into, inquiring into the iconographic importance and iconographic. Uh, uh, details of the uh, Shasta idol, which is situated in the high hills or high range, it is said. In Malayalam, there is a usual saying, Pampa Gadakka. In Malayalam, you say there is one Pampa, I'm paid it to Pampa Gadamu. There is a statement. How did you say this Pampa came? Pampa is a river, and the Pampa has been surpassed by the idol, etc. And, that. and anyway, I'm very happy that uh, Ash Kumar is here. And he is no stranger to KCHR. In previous two occasions, he had delivered lectures on the uh, archaeological, archaeological details of Kerala and also the archaeological explorations as well. So, welcome, dear Rajat Kumar, and all participants. You are all welcome once again. And I now request because the, our chairman, Dr. Michael Tharian, is otherwise engaged and he uh, informed us that he will not be able to join. But sometimes at the end of this meeting, he may be joining us. 
Anyway, on behalf of the KCHR, I extend you a hearty welcome this good afternoon. And I request uh, Dr. Ajit Kumar to present his paper. Thank you. Thank you so much, Karthi and sir, for this introduction. And thank you also, Michael Taragan, sir. And I now commence my presentation. Start, sir. Begin. Yeah. I hope it is coming on the screen. The presentation I hope is coming on the screen. Yes, it's coming on the screen. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Sir, it's not your PPT that is coming, but your other window. Could you um, again click on press in now and select the PPT? Because it's your browser window that is coming up on the screen. So you can click present now and select a window and on that uh, the PowerPoint window will also be shown. Once you select it, it will be shown on screen. Is it now coming? Is it coming now? Yes, yes, it's now coming. Okay. okay. Is it okay? Yes, yes, it is. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, thank you once again, Michael Targan, sir, and Karthikeyan, sir, for inviting me for this talk. Uh, the presentation is titled A Review of Idols of Buddha, the Enlightened Profounder Shasta, the Guardian Deity, and Shabarimalaya, the Tribal Ancestral Deity, from iconographical perspectives. Hello. 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 Is it visible? Uh, sir, Karna, sir, other is split the Tana window garden. It's visible. Uh, the window is split. And though that window, your PPT window, only half of it is visible. Uh, could you? Stop the presentation once more and restart it. I think there is a, it's got stuck due to some reason. Yes, um, now if you could go to the slideshow. Um, is it coming? No, sir, it's again in the same mode. I, um, either could you tell, sir, what to do? So just please hold on. Uh, yeah. Sir, could you please press the F5 button? F5? F5. Not in the screen, sir. It is on the keyboard. Keyboard? Keyboard, press F5. That will be on the top row of your keys, uh, function keys, F5. Not on the screen. Is it coming now? No, sir. Um, it's half. Actually, sir, it's showing, but there is also your. Uh, it's shown only as a small part of the screen. However, it is visible. So, sir, I think you could um, go ahead with this mode, and if anything is not visible, we will uh, let you know in the middle of the presentation. But as of now, it looks all right. Shall I start again? Uh, 
Yes, sir. Please. Is it coming now? It is. It is showing, sir. It's showing. Uh, but not on the full screen. However, everything you have written is visible. So I think it's okay, sir. Please go. Ahead. Okay. okay. So uh, now coming first part uh, about Buddhism. Uh, glimpses of early Buddhism in Tamaragam can be had from Sangam literature. Mani Mekhale states that Madhavi uh, and Mani Mekhale had embraced Buddhism. And in this work, the chief protagonist, Mani Mekhale, gets transported to the island of Mani Pallava or uh, Naitinivu, an island located in the Jaffna Peninsula of Sri Lanka, to imbibe notions of Buddhism. She, learned, she goes to learn or uh, imbibe the principles of Buddhism. Uh, by transporting herself at least uh, in a state to uh, this particular region in uh, Sri Lanka. And uh, this interesting narration in other ways indicate that Sri Lanka was a hub of early Buddhist activities. Due to favorable trade and political patronage, there was apparently a revival of Buddhism in Sri Lanka and Kerala between the 7th century under the Mahayana Buddhist. And the existence of Buddhism in Kerala during this period is attested from epigraphs and Buddha idols. Literature and epigraphs mention of Buddhist temple of Tirumulapadam or Srimulavasam, which was located uh, in the current shows along uh, uh, the Alappi uh, shows. And uh, the Lokanatha Bodhisattva in this particular temple was a very famous one. However, this particular uh, temple of the new, uh, Shri Mulavasam, which is mentioned in Mushigavamsim as well as in uh, epigraphs of the I dynasty, is now lost. And uh, though this temple is lost, there are Buddha images that have been report, um, reported from various sites in, in Kerala. The first report of Buddha images from Kerala uh, was by the uh, Gobinada Rao, and subsequently, uh, there have been researchers on Buddhism in Kerala by P.C. Alexander and others. And uh, there are Buddha images reported from Onapalli near Kaladi, uh, Kotaparam, uh, Patinam, Karimadi, Bharanikava, Mavilikara, Mardangulangara, etc. Also, uh, images uh, or idols reported from Palikal uh, near Baranganam, near Pala, and Mario. And this uh, image, these images attest the presence of Buddhism in Kerala. Images from Pala, Mariur, Kotaparam, and Kaladi are the latest finds, while the other sites have been previously reported by Gopinathra. The Buddha images have largely been found from coastal stretch of Kollam, Alapi, Ternakulam, and Trichur district. Apart from the coastal district, it is also found from the Kotayam and Idiki stretch. Buddha idols from Kerala are seated in Padmasana with no ornaments apart from his robe. His hair is done as curls with Pushnisha and at times with Shiraspasta or a flame shaped ornament over the Pushnisha. Now, this, these are the images. Uh, I'm going to the idols which have been recovered. This particular image from Pallikal uh, in Kollam district was reported first by Gopinath Rao. When he reported it, the head was missing. Subsequently, this particular idol was. Uh, taken to Napier Museum in Trivandrum, and it's still there in Napier Museum. However, uh, a head has been reconstructed re uh, over this headless image, uh, but it's still uh, 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 in the Napier Museum. You can notice the Padmasana where he is seated and Buddha seated in Dhyana Mudra. The only ornamentations you, all, the only no ornamentations you've seen, and the only uh, decorations which you see are or the only. Um, uh, 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 representation on the body is the drapery which is shown. This uh, particular uh, idol of uh, Buddha is from Mardangulangara near Arunagapalli, and you can notice that this Buddha image is again they have uh, curly hairs. The only ornamentation is the drapery, the folds of the drapery which is seen on the on the. Uh, left shoulder, the right shoulder, uh, shoulder is bare. Uh, the uh, the hair is shown as uh, in curly wrinkles and seated in Padmasana. All the Buddha images that are uh, that have been found from Kerala are seated in uh, seated images and in Padmasana. 
these are the images from Bharanikava and Mavelikara. And uh, what we notice here is that apart from the curly hair, you also have a projection uh, over the head above the Ushnisha, which is known as Shiraspasta or a uh, ornament showing high, high intelligence. So these are the Buddha images from Bharanikava. Uh, uh, this is the one. Varnikava, a close-up of the same figure. Uh, on the top, you have the images of Mahavelikara, the frontal, the back, and a close-up of the image uh, and the face. Uh, the image from Varnikava and Mahavelikara look very similar in, in, its, uh, in, in its style. Apart from that, we have uh, an image, a broken image, uh, protected by the state archaeology at Karmadi near Ambalapura. Then recently, uh, head of a a, a head of uh, Buddha has been reported from Ramaparam, and uh, there is also a, a image or idol from uh, Baranganam near Pala, which is uh, which is now housed in Trichur Museum. Apart from this, you have also an image, a very small image, uh, reported from Mariur in Idiki. This is very small, and so it's quite possible it has come into Mariur and uh, uh, by. Uh, somebody has brought it from somewhere else and kept it. Now, uh, uh, from further north near Kodungalur, uh, Kotapuram and Patinam, uh, both have uh, yielded uh, images of Buddha. The Kotapuram image was found by the State Archaeology Department. And uh, in Patinam, there was a broken image. Uh, the body was broken, but uh, an image seated in Padmasana was noticed. That image also has been taken by the temple authorities and uh, it has been thrown away. Uh, however, it was photographed by uh, different scholars. And uh, so it is at least available that uh, I think this photograph is by Dr. Rajesh Shekhar, who has reported it earlier. And uh, Onapalli in Kaladi also was first reported by Dr. Ajay Shekhar. And uh, this image is uh, currently under worship. This image is a strange uh, uh, off here. Though the curly hair is visible in the front, the Shiraspasta is not shown detached, but it is attached to a, uh, 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 the, uh, the back portion. There is a, uh, a projection on which you know the Shiraspasta is carved. So this is an uh, image which is stylistically uh, different from the ones usually noticed. But, uh, but he is also seated in Padmasana and uh, in Dhyanabhadra. Now apart from the images which we have noticed in stone, uh, the one uh, which is attributed as Buddha is the image of uh, from Kilirur. Kilirur, uh, there is an image of uh, Buddha. It doesn't seem to be uh, Buddha in the usual style. He's, it appears that it's a Bodhisattva uh, image, uh, a very late image, uh, possibly around uh, 17th century or so. Uh, however, uh, excuse me, sir, is, sir, yeah. sir uh, your PowerPoint has gone off screen because someone accidentally presented. So could you please restart the presentation? The no, 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 the PowerPoint, sir. It was visible till now. Just now it stopped. So could you no, from the beginning or again? I have... From this slide, from this slide, please. From this slide, sir. May I request the participants to please do not click the present now button because uh, the presenter's PowerPoint will disappear in that. Ashkumar, please continue. Is it coming now? Yes, sir, please uh, come. No, sir, it's not. Uh, you'll have to. The picture not comes. Present now again. Is it yes, coming? Sir. Yes, yes, sir. Please continue from here. Thank you. 
so this image is from kelerur uh, and uh, pc alexander has uh, stated it uh, to be an image of buddha but it is not like the usual images in stone this is in uh, this image is in bronze uh, and uh, he shown with ornamentations a kirita mukuta is not uh, shown like other buddha images with curly hair or shirasvasta so this does not appear to be a typical uh, buddha image Uh, it could be a bodhisattva image but in this temple at kelleru it is now worshiped as krishna so um, we are not pretty sure whether this can be uh, a bodhisattva image or not it's not sure however um, uh, it has been considered as a buddhist image or, or a image of buddhist origin and uh, similarly uh, we have uh, the bodhisattva uh, lokanatha which was famous Uh, throughout uh, uh, the western coast uh, and this was the image which was lo located in shri mula vasam which was taken you know engulfed by sea and uh, there is a, a manuscript in cambridge university and uh, it has got a representation of uh, this bodhisattva lokanatha which was uh, basically installed in, in the shrine at shri mula vasam and this is an image uh, this is a, a, a image of that particular loganatha which was supposed to be installed in the shrine at shri mulavasam now uh, as we probably all of you know that the buddha images uh, come to exist or come to come into existence during the period of the kushana rule uh, in, in uh, north the earliest images come from gandhara and uh, the mathura school uh, under the uh, the kushan rulers and subsequently uh, there was a shift from hinayana to mahayana the mahayana school uh, had started to make images of buddha and um, buddha uh, with the spread of mahayana buddhism uh, the uh, idolatry or you know the image worship of buddha starts in, in south also uh, and uh, it becomes to flourish in the other uh, the school under the shatavahanas and the ishwakus in andhra and uh, uh, they had a, a a good buddhist tradition in in andhra, andhra region and uh, some of the main sites being at amravati and nagarjunakonda the nagarjunakonda um, uh, city had even uh, monasteries established by sri lankan monks so probably due to the influence of the you know the, the anuradhapura uh, uh, school of monks coming to uh, uh, you know for for a, a religious activity into into the in the andhra region especially into nagarjunakonda where they had a monastery and nagarjunakonda also had started uh, you know having images of buddha worship uh, in, in its monastery complex uh, this particular tradition of having buddha images started monastery also probably goes to sri lanka so the initial images which you noticed in anuradhapura buddha images from anuradhapura have got a style which is very similar to the nagarjunakonda or the andhra school of style so basically they are all uh, seated images with curly hairs and things like that and uh, we in kerala also have uh, buddha images which are uh, of curly uh, hair and uh, uh, with no other ornamentations and this particular the, the images of buddha from kerala are stylistically very similar to the ones in anuradhapura so it's quite possible that the buddha images which we noticed here were brought by buddhist believers from sri lanka into uh, the kerala during their course of interaction of trade or migration it's quite possible that the buddhism in kerala during the later period came from uh, the sri lankan uh, uh, shores so they have at least in the, uh, the sculptures they have a style very similar to the anuradhapura school which was flourishing in sri lanka now uh, coincidence between shasta and buddha the name shasta in sanskrit means teacher guide lord it was assigned as a name to the synonym dictionary amarkosha and this led some scholars to consider buddha and shasta as one though it is not so in iconographical concepts and representations in north india during 7th 8th century in some regions buddha comes to be treated as an incarnation of vishnu and is found represented in the dashavatara panel depicted around vishnu idols or on temple lintels doorways door jambs etc now this is an image uh, of vishnu uh, our idol of vishnu 
with uh, the, the dasha avatara carved around uh, him and you will notice that uh, apart from you know we have uh, depictions of malsya kurma uh, narsimha and at the bottom we have the representation of buddha and towards the right side or, or the left side of the image we have the future incarnation kalki so in, May, in by 8th 9th century buddha comes to be accepted as an incarnation of vishnu in north india now this is from bhuteshwar temple in bhuteshwar um, madhya pradesh where you will notice that malsya kurma vara uh, narasimha and then you saw, uh, at the towards the uh, uh, end of the depiction you have buddha standing and the future uh, incarnation kalki represented sitting on a horse so uh, it is noticed in many places in madhya pradesh and parts of up so by 8th 9th century buddha becomes uh, comes to be assimilated into the hindu fold in at least in some parts of north india in kerala uh, shastra and buddha idols coexist during 8th 9th century and to differentiate their identities both are represented with individual and definite characters buddha idols are all seated in padmasana and only wear a robe whereas shastra is generally depicted seated on a pedestal in lalitasana and adorned with jata mukuta and various ornaments there is no idol of buddha represented in the character of shastra from tamilika and these are just a, a preliminary uh, outlook of how shastra and buddha idols look these are images of shastra and these are the images of buddha from kerala you can notice the difference they are highly ornamented with Uh, and they have got a large hairdo, but here Buddha images don't have any ornamentations apart uh, from the sangati or the dress which is worn. And uh, hair is shown in two styles, basically in as uh, curly tufts or with curly tufts with Sri Pasta on the top. Now, coming to Shasta, Shasta as a deity is not referred in uh, any early. Uh, sanskrit religious sense in sanskrit shastra etymologically means a teacher a guide or lord of a country or land etc and in the dictionary amar kosha synonym dictionary amar kosha it is used as a synonym of buddha shastra the name shastra is also assigned to buddha in the synonym dictionary amar kosha which is a sanskrit word the name shastra associated with this deity seems to have been derived from the tamil word satan shastra as a deity finds mention, mention in tamil devaram hymns dating to 7th 8th century ce and this attests that his ethnicity is indigenous to tamilagam and also parts of tamil nadu tamil shastra images are found mostly in tamilagam more so in kerala and parts of southern tamil nadu in northern tamil nadu shastra images are not very popular uh, however he, he seems to have been a deity very popular in kerala and tamilagam and also parts of tulu nadu uh, though varied in iconographical concept and ca uh, character arya ayanar hariraputra and ayappa are some popular synonyms used to address shastra that is though shastra is derived from a, a, a typical tamil word satya It, it is it is it is also found referred to uh, by shastra as a deity is also found referred uh, referred to by the names arya ayana harira putra etc uh, so these are actually uh, common usages but iconographically they do show uh, distinct styles uh, arya and ayana rather are rather indigenous names however the name harira putra assigned to shastra indicates that he is a son of hari or mohini and hara shiva the puranic story says that during the churning of the milky ocean or palari madan there was a fight that occurred between the asuras and the devas for the amrita that emerged out of this churn and uh, vishnu disguised as a beautiful maiden mohini took charge of the distribution of the amrita among the feuding group and shiva is supposed to have fallen in love with mohini and their union resulted in a child most puranas do they mention the story they do not assign the any name to this child except for brahmananda purana which tells 
which calls the child as arihara putra so the, this is a puranic story of uh, samudra manthan and, uh, and the emergence of nectar and uh, mohini uh, vishnu taking the form of mohini is well known or uh, uh, stated in many puranas but the child that resulted out of this union finds fully mention uh, uh, in brahmananda purana and the child is called as arihara putra uh, apart stevaram hymns uh, uh, and apart stevaram hymns dating to 7th 8th century and later sex uh, text like shri bhagavatam amshu bedagama supra bedagama etc refer to hariyara putra and he later becomes synonymous with shastra so by considering shastra as hariyara putra the indigenous and indigenous deity shastra was assimilated into the brahma uh, a, a myth and legends and stories were created and uh, the crux of the story of a uh, child being born out of uh, uh, the union between uh, uh, hari and hara is taken to be shastra has assimilated into the hindu fold as hari hara putra so shastra who is basically an indigenous deity uh, deity to uh, tamilgam becomes assimilated as a minor hindu divinity even after this assimilation shastra during early period possibly carried the status of holy a demigod and probably as a protector of a temple or a land quite like inr uh, in present tamil nadu the guardianship nature assigned to shastra can be gleaned from references in kerala utpatti a late literary work dating to 17th 18th century there are also many other works uh, of british period which uh, speaks of uh, shastra as a uh, guardian deity now uh, in kerala utpatti um, Uh, refers to the construction of shasta temples on eight mountain towns of the western ghats and devi temples along the coast so as to guard the people living in between the mountains uh, and the uh, sea shore from uh, any calamities or any uh, from evil and misfortune and this uh, is uh, also Uh, stated in other uh, literary works now uh, coming to the idols of shastra uh, shastra idols in kerala are earlier than all written records and the earliest appear to be from 8 9 c nearly all shastra idols were observed to be placed on a podium in the open and not enshrined within temples and this feature is noticed also in tamil nadu so all early images uh, observed in, in in kerala the shastra image uh, idol was supposed to be uh, was observed to be placed on a pedestal or a podium in the open and it was not enshrined and this feature is noticed in tamil nadu and there are certain temples in kerala and tamil nadu where the shastra images are still placed in the open in kur Shasta was considered as the master of demons and was offered sacrifices of cock or rooster and other animals and this is bit recorded by Kirtu in Kerala too his early idols possibly received sacrifices and this apparently necessitated his placement outside temple premises and towards the last phase of temple construction activity in Kerala which is dated between 14th and 19th century independent and subsidiary temples came to be erected for Shasta in major east facing temple complexes inr uh, in east facing uh, uh, temples a uh, major east facing temple complex is dedicated to vishnu shiva or devi a subsidiary shrine for shastra was erected to the southwest side outside the nalambalam some temples of shastra in kerala even today have no roof uh, or idol apart from a stone and they remain open to that uh, the temples were And there are no idols in the sanctum sanctorum or idols which are play or, or temples which have open which are open to sky uh, they generally uh, are char- characterized as or uh, stated to be of swayambhu nature so iconography of shastra as described in text amshu bedagama describes shastra idols as seated in padmasana with three eyes and four hands In Kerala, Shasta icons have been found in stone, bronze, painting, and also in uh, some sculptures uh, of wood. However, 
idols revealing similar character as mentioned in the text has not been reported in kerala four armed shasta occurs in temple murals from late 18th century onwards icons of shasta or hariyara putra do not hold attributes symbolizing his parentage from shiva and vishnu and this seems to imply that his indigenous lineage that is hariyara putra or shasta do not hold any attribute symbolizing or uh, his parentage from shiva and vishnu shiva has trident or tamru such things is not observed with shasta similarly vishnu has shankara gada patma but that is also not noticed with uh, in the hands of shasta shasta uh, idol seem to have an independent character uh, from the counterpart at inr Uh, who is a guardian deity from Tamil Nadu? Iyanar has mustache, a fierce look, and is often shown seated on a horse with sword in his hand. Shasta is never depicted with mustache or fierce fierce look. Nor does he holds hold a sword in his hand, and his vehicle is considered an elephant according to the text. General iconographic characters of stone idols of Shasta. Most of the early stone idols of Shasta. Dateable between eighth and sixteenth century, depict him seated on a pedestal or pita, usually without consorts or vehicles. So he is not accompanied by his uh, consorts, or nor is he shown with uh, his vehicle or vahana. Uh, on the pedestal, he is seated in Lalitasana or Sukhasana posture, with one leg folded flat and resting on the seat horizontally, and the other foot placed is. Uh, the other foot is also placed on the pedestal, but the knee is raised upwards. There can also be representation with one leg placed horizontally on the pedestal and the other hanging down. And technically, the, if the left leg is bending, it is known as Vama uh, Lalitasana, and if the right leg is bending, it is called Sabhi Lalitasana. Lalitasana posture with the feet of the right leg resting on the seat, with the knee raised up and extending. the right hand on it is called as maharaja leelasana so whenever the right hand is resting on the knee of the uh, raised uh, uh, right leg uh, it is called as maharaja leelasana though it is not a very popular posture among shasta idols from kerala in some idols shasta is shown seated on a pedestal with legs crossed over one another and the soles directed upwards and this posture is known as swatikasana From 17th century onward, Shasta at times is depicted seated on a normal pedestal or a lotus pedestal with the left leg raised up and the feet resting on a seat, fastened with a yoga patta. In the same posture, with or without yoga patta, he is also occasionally shown seated on an elephant uh, or on a pedestal with his wife Purna and Pushkala. So, from 17th century, uh, his vahana, the elephant, and his consorts Purna and Pushkala come to be depicted along with him. ornamentations shasta in stone is always depicted with two arms his his left hand is often placed on the lap and the right hand holds an indistinct object which could be a fruit or a flower in later idols his right hand holds a lotus or a chendu or a crooked stick and uh, the extended left hand is placed resting on the knee shasta head is adorned with jatta or matted lock and a tiara or a band over his forehead the tiara was apparently tied beneath the jatta as it is never shown over the jatta at the back the matted lock and the tiara received varied treatments according to the caliber and merit of the sculpt according to text shastas ear should be differently adorned the left usually has a patra kundala and the other ratna kundala or if it is left bare however after 17th century at times both the ears are adorned with similar ornaments chennavira is an ornament worn on the chest is not noticed in early idols of shasta but it is observed in the idols later than 17th century now this idol is a shasta idol and we'll just observe the typical characters which goes with the idol of shasta first thing he has the jatta mukuda or matted locks on the front he has a tiara which is placed his left ear is normally uh, found with a patra kundala the right ear is left bare and sometimes the right ear can be adorned with a ratna kundala he wears a hara a necklace an ajno pavita or a sacred thread from his left shoulder going beneath his right arm on his stomach he has a band called as udarabandha 
at the waist he has got a, he has a band called kati bandha which is tied over his lower garment and on the hands he has the upper hand he has got a uras and lower angle hand he has got valayals or bangles also represent in some instances we have also got uh, a shasta images with anklets tied he is seated on a pedestal without depiction of his consorts or any vehicle in lalita uh, lalitasana pose and the pita is also played and uh, one leg is kept Uh, horizontally along the uh, pita and the other one the right leg is raised up with the uh, right uh, arm resting on the knee so normally you see always his uh, left hand placed on the knee or on on his thigh uh, idols dating between 8th and 12th century has been earlier reported from sites like vilnium Damanthali, Payyanur, uh, Maniur, uh, Mangalam, Bradanga Shailesha Temple, and uh, recently an interesting idol of Shasta has been noticed from Payyanur, uh, close to the Vayana Shala or the Reading Room, northwest of uh, northeast of the Subramaniam Temple at Payyanur. And there are also some idols housed in the museums at Kolkata, uh, Trishur, Kayangulam, Trivandrum, and Padmanabhara Palace, etc. The early Shasta idols dating from 8th, 9th century come from Vilnium and Erimela. the capital city of the ayes and nanai dynasty respectively these are the uh, two idols that have been reported from payanur with uh, area which was the capital of the nanans especially the erimela region and uh, the one on the left is from payanur uh, vayana shala compound and the right from uh, the ramanthali temple uh, located uh, in close to erimela both are seated in lalitasana uh, the ramanthali idol is over in swatikasana where the, uh, the feet the sole of the feet is raised upwards now this is a close up of the image uh, of uh, found at payanur the image close to this image we have also uh, uh, shivalinga which is uh, there in the compound and uh, stylistically Uh, both the shivalinga and uh, the sculpture of shasta is datable to 8th 9th century you can notice the tiara and the uh, jata mukuta and the ornamentations of the year interestingly he wears an anklet also uh, in uh, other uh, apart from that he has the usual ornamentation hara yajnopavita katibanda uh, udara banda uh eurus valel all these ornamentation which is noticed by the sculpture is also seen here apart from additionally we have got also dupra or uh, anklet uh, worn by the shasta image so this is how the uh, image looks from the back where the curly uh, tuft of hair is arranged in stripes this uh, image on the left is from vilnium it's a shasta image seated in bamalalitasana um, with his left leg hanging down he has the same ornamentations uh, like we have noticed this thing both the ears have similar ornaments of patra kuntala there is also a uh, uh, image or idol of dakshina murti at venue stylistically both are very similar and these uh, idols are dated to 8th 9th century and venue uh, was the capital of the ay dynasty so Uh, it, it is quite possible that this images came up during 8th 9th century while the ayas had established themselves in pidi now uh, coming to uh, an idol from bradanga shailesha temple the image on the left is it's, it's one of the uh, fine fine sculptures of shasta uh, you notice the same ornamentations jata mugata uh, hara nyopavi uh, the waist band the stomach band the, uh, the ornamentations on the hand um, are uh, very clear in this particular image this image is broken it was kept in the open it, and worship however recently uh, the temple there has been renovated and this idol has now been shifted into a temple a uh, structural temple and installed in it this image is actually this bradanga shailesha image which is on the left is broken uh, at the neck however this has been reinstalled broken images are normally not worship but this is installed in the in the sanctum of a, a, a small shrine built there and uh, 
brass uh, you know cover up has been done uh, towards the front uh, but this is a very beautiful image uh, the one on the right is the manure image you can notice patrakundra in the left ear and dhanakundla in the right apart from usual ornamentations and he is they both these images are seated in lalitasana in lalitasana posture you in, in generally you notice that the left hand is placed over the thigh this is a typical of uh, images from kerala where you notice the left hand placed uh, at the thigh or close to the knee of the uh, folded left leg this is the uh, image which we had discussed earlier this is from vari subramanian tem temple uh, at mangalam in district alappi a very beautiful image which shows an influence of the chola tradition uh, this image also is kept in the open and worship like like i said earlier uh, just on a pedestal in in uh, lalitasana no or uh, vahanas or consort shown and as the usual as usual it is left and is placed on the thigh or, or just close to the knee so this is typical uh, the patra kundla in one year the other one remains bare the beautiful uh, hair locks and the next uh, images are from ramanthali again in payanur which we discuss i am showing this picture again and uh, again only because uh, these images are seated in swatikasana uh, see apart from uh, the earlier ones which we noted like in swatikasana the the sole of the feet is raised upward so that is one peculiarity and this image from badagara is in calicut museum you notice the usual ornamentations which shastra has developed chatamagutta the tiara and all other ornamentations which we had earlier discussed only the sole of the feet is placed upwards known as and it is known as swatikas these are uh, shastra images from kumaran kovil on the left uh, from uh, nepia museum in the center and from sherthale now in kayangolam museum in the uh, right so these are all uh, images uh, idols which are dated to around 15 16 century they also have the uh, typical character and uh, the ornamentations the jata mukata uh, 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 they receive varied treatments according to the caliber of the artisan who carves it so these are also shastra images and um, and the kumaran kovil uh, shastra also has a chenna we are depicted uh, there has been some opinion that this could be also subramanian but he shows all all the other characters which we have noticed in uh, the shastra idols especially the placement of the hand uh, and other ornamentations except for the chenna vira which becomes a, a very common uh, ornament uh, after 17th century and uh, this is a metal image of shastra from nepia museum he is seated in maharaja leelasana where uh, a, the right hand is placed over the knee of the upraised right leg which is also resting on the pedestal so uh, maharaja leelasana where the right hand is placed over the knee ex uh, extended and placed over the uh, knee of the right leg is a posture which is known as maharaja leelasana it's not a very popular Uh, seating posture for shastras in kerala and this image also uh, you will notice that there is a chenna vira or ornamentation uh, ornament uh, which is adorning a uh, shastra apart from the other ornamentation he is slightly more uh, elaborately ornamented with the ratna kundlas and uh, things like that and the, even the jata mukuta is shown in a very elaborate fashion this is done in uh, brass it's a hollow uh, it now um, uh, the early images uh, of shastra are noticed in kerala right from 8th 9th century we notice shastra images in kerala uh, contemporaneous image idols of shastra from uh, dating to around 8th 9th century of pallava period is very rare even in north uh, tamil nadu shastra idols are very uh, rare dating from early period our shastra images become popular uh, from chola period in chola most of the idols which we notice are uh, the early idols are coming from the chola territory um, especially around um, region uh, that you notice many idols it's quite possible that uh, that uh, cholas had um, you know invaded 
uh, Kerala, uh, right from the time of Rajaraja Chola, there have been constant invasions of uh, Malay Nada by Cholas. It's quite possible that it is then that uh, they took a fancy to Shasta and probably uh, started making his idols also in in Tamil Nadu. And these two image idols are uh, from Chennai Museum and National Museum dating to the Chola period. The typical uh, necklace, elaborate necklace, Chennaveera, which is noticed, is a typical of the Chola character. From in the, uh, the cho idols which are made in Tamil, Tamil Nadu, especially during Chola period and subsequently, you'll notice that um, the left uh, leg is raised uh, up, which is placed on the pedestal, and the left hand is extended is placed over the knee of the uh, of the uh, the right leg uh, of the left leg sorry so this is a very common posture where the uh, left leg is raised up and the left hand rests on the knee it is a, it, either it extends uh, straight or it extends downward but it is always placed on the left knee so this is a style which has been popular in Tamil Nadu, even during later period from the Nayaka period also you notice the idols of Shasta follow this particular style. And uh, in Tamil Nadu, you also notice Shasta holding uh, lotus at times, uh, lotus or lily in his hand. So this particular, uh, the Tamil Nadu Shasta images, you have uh, sometimes holding uh, lily in his right hand and the uh, uh, left hand of the idol is always extended and placed on the raised up left knee. So this style becomes uh, popular uh, in Tamil Nadu. Now, uh, the southern Tamil Nadu um, region of Kerala, especially the one uh, territory which was you know, up to Trivandrum district, you know, was always influenced by the happenings of, uh, because of constant inv invasions of the Cholas and Pandyas. Uh, there was a cultural interaction between Tamil, uh, Tamil Nadu and uh, Malay Nadu or the southern part. So in, in, in the stretch at Kalu, from Kalukutam uh, down to Kanyakumari, you notice that many idols uh, uh, of the later period, from around, dating from around 17th century onwards, uh, they have a style which is influenced from the, the Tamil Nadu tradition. Now the left image was uh, kept, uh, of Shasta was kept along with Nagas and Kalukutam temple. Uh, this image uh, possibly came from outside according to sources and it was subsequently removed uh, from this uh, compound which was which is placed along with the Nagas at, uh, uh, beneath the people tree. It was removed and thrown away say, because uh, some Deva Prashnam which they conducted as I stated that this image does not belong to the temple. However, you can notice a typical uh, style from Tamil Nadu in this particular image, the Yoga Patta which comes over the left uh, raised up leg is a typical feature which comes around uh, 17th century onwards. And uh, these are bronze images, one from Tiruvalangad and Tanjavur. Uh, this image on the left is also has an inscription in Shaka year dating to 1536 or 1614 C. And it, it is donated or it, it was made for the merit of Poneri Appan, who was also related to the uh, Pandya rulers of uh, Karekodi. So uh, uh, it shows that there was a revival of uh, the Shasta cult in Tamil Nadu, uh, especially during the uh, later Pandya and Nayaka uh, rules. So the, you notice that uh, from 17th century onwards, you notice that the Yoga Pata over the left leg becomes a norm in many of the sculptures in Tamil Nadu. Uh, and on in Kerala also you notice Yoga Pata sometimes to differentiate the image uh, from the ones that is made in Tamil Nadu. You notice sometimes images with the right leg tied over the Yoga Pata. That is, instead of, the, instead of the left leg, in Kerala images you sometimes notice that there is a Yoga Pata tied with it. The right leg is uh, raised up and a yoga patta is shown. But in Tamil Nadu uh, area, um, normally from 17th century onwards, you notice that the yoga patta is right on the raised up uh, uh, left uh, leg and the arm extends over the knee of this particular left leg. And uh, the Patrakundla you notice is typical. And apart from that, this crooked uh, stick, which is introduced 
uh, or chentu or kukkut is introduced into uh, the hand of shasta from 17th century onwards so uh, apart from that uh, the plain pedestal which was noticed earlier is now uh, a lotus pedestal takes the place of uh, the shasta images from 17th century onwards so the 17th century images can basically characterize this yoga patta which emerges the padma pitha which emerges and also the crooked stick which emerges in the hand or right hand of the uh, shasta idols are typical uh, of uh, the images from tamil nadu from 17th uh, century onwards from 17th century onwards also these uh, shasta images are shown with his consorts purna and pushkala there are many places from where where uh, bronze this is uh, currently the center image of bronze image is currently in saraswati mahal museum at uh, tanjavur and the one in left uh, bottom is from uh, tiruvallanad which we just discussed is uh, found with his consorts purna and pushkala and there are many uh, places where he is shown with uh, consorts seated uh, on the same pedestal along with him in uh, in the same pedestal he is accompanied by purna on the right and pushkala on the left and uh, there are also temples in kerala uh, with purna and pushkala seated and the tv puram temple near vakkam has got a subsidiary shrine where uh, shasta is uh, seated with purna and pushkala again this image which is in tv puram is also very late images uh, a late image so from 17th century onwards shasta comes to be represented along purna and pushkala so it is shasta who is basically associated with this vice purna and pushkala and not ayappa so some people would say that ayappa is married and been shown in some uh, temples uh, but it's not ayappa who is married and uh, shown with consort but it is shasta who is basically married and shown with purna and consort so shasta is also uh, is associated with his vehicle as elephant it is also mentioned in texts uh, that his vehicle is an elephant sometimes he is shown uh, seated uh, alone like the one on the left is from tagore it's in the government museum at ras and uh, the one on the right is from valavur and both places you notice he is seated on an elephant with that crooked stick which i said is a typical one which emerges from 17th century so these images where he is shown seated on an elephant are late images and uh, however there are also very some rare images of where shasta is shown seated on an elephant with purna and pushkala also so they are, they are very rare, uh, they are very uh, these are very rare images but sometimes he is shown seated with purna and pushkala on the same pedestal and at the pedestal you sometimes notice Uh, an elephant car so such representations are also there now this this is a representation from adi malai uh, adi annamalai temple in near tiruvannamalai and here you notice all the forms of uh, shasta in the same sanctum sanctorum the shasta seated on a pedestal with his uh, right uh, leg uh, hanging down and uh, there is also a seated legs placed on the pedestal and uh, the left uh, leg raised up and the left hand uh, kept over it there is also an uh, elephant uh, riding shasta which is there and also a simple monolithic elephant kept representing shasta there are many temples in tamil nadu where shasta is even now kept in the open and worship along with nagas and sometimes you also additionally find sometimes uh, monolithic elephants also in that open uh, open air shrines now this image is from uh, telandi in kanyakumari district again uh, it clearly shows the influence of the, uh, the tradition which is there in, uh, in tamil nadu and with the yoga patta on the uh, left leg now uh, at charu near takkale in kanyakumari district which is close to the padmanavaram palace you have a temple dedicated to ana shasta so here the temple itself is known as ana shasta and basically here uh, you have large number of boat tip elephants which are uh, uh, donated to this temple and uh, this temple has been reported uh, by dr vaishak in his article so a large number of monolithic uh, elephants are uh, depicted uh, you know comes to an all around the 
uh, arranged and kept around this particular temple. There are many temples in in, in, in Trivandrum districts so where uh, the name of the temple is Shasta Temple. But however, if you visit the temple, you will not see an image of Shasta, but you will notice a, a monolithic uh, image of an elephant kept. So these are again from the same uh, temple. This is from uh, Niyatingara where uh, an elephant is uh, worshipped as Shasta. This elephant is kept, uh, uh, you know, on a, uh, in, on a, on beneath a banyan uh, people tree and it is worshipped as Shasta. Even in Trivandrum city, uh, in, a, in the Shasta temple opposite the medical college, you have such uh, monolithic um, Shastas. Now, uh, these are from uh, again from Tamil Nadu, where I just stated that sometimes I, I had a Shasta image is shown seated on a pedestal, and beneath uh, on the pedestal, you notice that Vahana elephant also represented. In early images, I, that I, state, I had stated that no Vahana is represented uh, on, the, on the Pitha, and these are images which are very late coming from uh, different parts of Tamil Nadu. Uh, where you also notice uh, the Vahana elephant depicted at the bottom. Now, uh, 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 apart from uh, sculpture uh, idols, we have all, we also notice uh, Shasta uh, in painted form. And the one on the left is from Kotakal Shiva Temple, and the one on the right is from Pandavam Shasta Temple, and uh, Pandavam Shasta Temple also, uh, you know, you have a, a company. Uh, person shasta is shown with four arms holding a bow and arrow in his hand uh, bow in his uh, left leg and arrow in his right leg and here again uh, shasta has a bow and a arrow in his right hand with ankusha uh, also and uh, this uh, representation matches with the uh, description that is given in amshubeda uh, and, and uh, such texts uh, where he sh they, they say that he should be four armed. So four armed images are idols are not found, uh, Shasta are not found in Kerala and even in Tamil Nadu, there are no four armed Shasta idols, uh, but uh, he is represented in painting in, uh, in, with four arms. So this is from uh, the mural paintings in Kerala, Portakal and Pandav Shasta temples. Now, uh, there has always been, you know, uh, some people who cite uh, state that uh, Shasta is INR. So mm -hmm. INR, if you observe that he is a village deity who is supposed to be a protector of the fields and he is supposed to be traveling on a horse and he, 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 it, is, it, it is stated in the myths that he wanders around the village to protect the uh, field and uh, um, uh, the population there. So he is basically she is seated on a horse. He usually has a sword in his hand. He's shown very fierce looking with moustache uh, and, and of course a crown and things like that. And uh, this temple uh, from Gobichati Palayam has both Shasta and Ayana. Ayana is shown seated on a horse uh, with the usual moustache and fierce looking. But Shasta is shown seated as we noticed in stone sculpture on an elephant without any fierce looking features. So definitely even as late as 19th century and 20th century also, Iconographically, Shasta and INR are depicted differently. So INR and Shasta are not one and the same. Iconographically, Shasta, uh, 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 INR has a sword in his hand and he rides on a an horse and he's very fierce looking, but Shasta is not fierce looking, neither he holds sword in his hand. It's only that uh, crooked stick which he holds in his uh, right hand and he's seated in the same posture as on in the images of later 17th century. So, INR and Shasta are not one and the same, though it is popularly these names are exchanged for one another. Now coming to Ayappa. Ayappa as a deity that does not find mention in ancient Hindu texts or scriptures. The name Ayappa and Shasta have their roots in the Sanskrit name Chatan. Ayappa means Ayya means Lord and Appa means Father. First, to discuss about Ayyappa as a deity and his cult and practices from Pur and Tamil Nadu, and gives some insights into the cult of Ayyappa. Kittle calls him Maladevam or Hill God, and another name for Ayyappa is Shasta, according to Kittle. Now, this is uh, uh, Kittle's. Uh, 
uh, write up which came up uh, about in indian antiquary in 1873 uh, titled as poor superstitions so what emerges out of this discussion uh, by f kettle uh, in poor superstitions is, is what i would discuss in the next slide uh, now he says that as i stated earlier i am aya appa means lord or father and he also says that he could be a demon master and uh, he says that ayappa is also called as maladeva or hill god he further states that ayappa also has a, a name called beta deva or beta deva beta in it, because it's kannada beta means hunting so he, he so he is also called as beta deva or beta deva or lord of lord or father of hunting expedition so he is assigned uh, three basic characters even uh, by um, uh, little as early as 1873 first he calls us the name derives or implies lord or father and another name is maladeva or the hill gods and he is also father or lord of hunting hence he is also known as beta deva or beta deva and uh, he, he says that ayappa is represented uh, as small stones or images on platforms or digamba dimba katte in jungles and groves that is uh, uh, the idols of uh, ayappa are basically simple stone or small images which are installed on platforms in jungles and groves and on this platform models of bow arrow dog horse elephant in wood and clay are offered by devotees now uh, once hunt is successful ayappa stone is presented with coconut some rice powder and arak in the kur region in 1873 it uh, will says that ayappa stands between demon and deities as swine fit for demons are not offered for him because earlier swines used to be offered for ayappa after successful hunts and things like that but by 19th century the swines which were earlier offered to him have not have been stopped and so there is a conversion or there is a shift from the principle of demon to deity in the in the worship of ayappa in kur so though generally worshiped by laymen or uh, lay kurgis some of these ayappa uh, installations in in the in, in kur also was worshiped annually by brahmin so there was a slow uh, you know take over of worship of ayappa who was basically a demon or a maladeva or a, an ethnic deity there was a slow conversion into the brahmanical fold by uh, by offering him worship uh, annually uh, by brahmins and he says that another name for ayappa is also shastava and shastava also means demon master and he says that shastava received sacrifices of fowls very close to his installation and um, he says that ayappa even if this idol or a, this image or this deity is installed as a temple deity also he continues to be a patron of huntsmen and receives the same offerings as jungle ayappa and receives bloody sacrifices near his temple precincts so basically they continue to uh, uh, despite all the uh, developments that had taken place uh, ayappa uh, even if he was a temple uh, he was installed in temples he used to be treated as a patron of huntsmen so this is what is the uh, you know the crux of what kettle uh, sites about uh, the uh, deity called ayappa now in uh, these are the examples of uh, the the uh, uh, you know the uh, they are basically menhirs or uh, megalithic monuments but uh, they are worshiped and under, under the name of ayappa or ishwara or uh, subramanya these are the uh, you know given different names have been given over the period of time 
uh, even kettle says that sometimes he is known as uh, ayappa and sometimes he is known as ishwara and things like that the one in the center uh, this particular man here which is in the center it, it, it is close, it is near virajpet in pur and this particular um, uh, particular man here is worship as ayappa there are also uh, some small you know uh, neolithic celt uh, type uh, uh, smooth stones which are placed and again uh, worship sometimes they used to be painted with ice and something uh, uh, as reported by kettle but here you notice that uh, brass or metal ice are you know tied to these particular uh, smooth stones and they are worship uh, there are many instances where smooth stones also represent you know ancestors after the ancestor is uh, uh, buried or cremated a smooth stone from the river is uh, brought out and then it is worshiped uh, it is uh, as a representative of the deceased this is also practiced by kurumbas in the nilgiri region even today where after the burial or demise of a, uh, after after the cremation or burial of a uh, elderly person a stone smooth stone from the river bed is collected and it is worshiped worshiped as an ancestor and they keep it keep it in a kovil known as uh, you know kurumba kovil and in this uh, kurumba kovil they keep all these smooth stones which represent ancestors and sometimes uh, in some uh, of the uh, tribes also they make small images of brass which are basically denoting their ancestors so here in the in the, in the, in the one on the right you notice that uh, at the bottom they make small dolmen like structures and inside these uh, they uh, enshrine small idols or such smooth stones and they Uh, worship it here you notice a trident also kept close to this man here and it is worship uh now uh, continue with shastra and ayappa from references found in the works of memoirs of travel uh, survey by warden corners the native life of travel native life in travel code by sambal mathir and travel code tribes and caste by l a krishna here it is obvious that shastra and ayappa were two deities revered and worshiped by adivasis or hill tribes uh, like malayarans malapandarans ullardans kochuvelans urulis viswans malavedans and kanikars etc ayappa in shambhivala temple is referred to as hill deity or forest deity and synonymously also as shastra in these uh, works which i mentioned about it, this this is the uh, uh, reference what you find it synonymously also referred to as shastra um Uh, and they also say that the uh, ayappa shabrimala temple was uh, basically uh, uh, in in l krishna's work he says that uh, the shabrimala temple was in the custody of pandalam raja uh, the, the, the kakad koti and perinad folks and kochuvelan so kochuvelan was the basically uh, the priest or the uh, person who con conducted the rituals uh, Uh, for the onward journey to shabrimala also and also at shabrimala so he is described as uh, dressed in black uh, and there is also uh, statements in krishna here that goats were sacrificed uh, uh, before the uh, the commencement of the uh, the annual pilgrimage to uh, uh, shabrimala so krishna here also says that ural is worship shasta at uh, arakulam Uh, Ayyappan Kovil and Shabri Bala. So hence it is apparent that there were more more than one Shasta temple along the hills. Uh, but the hill or forest deity Ayyappa was rather exclusive exclusive to Shabri Bala. So there are more uh, you know uh, Shasta temples or uh, temples dedicated to uh, you know ancestors or uh, you know Shasta all along the hills. And um, uh, this continued even as late as 1950. because even the shabrimala uh, temple uh, in, in in the uh, arsan report which was filed by uh, dsp keshav menon he calls Sh uh, shabrimala ayappa as forest deity uh, so it's obvious that uh, that tradition had continued even up to 1950 uh, just uh, yeah, at that time in the arsan or uh, looting and the destruction of the idol which was there in 1950 uh, it was he was basically ayappa was basically known as forest it is only after 1950 that the change a new uh, idol was installed 
and new uh, you know uh, measures were taken to conserve it and new uh, methods of or uh, brahmanical uh, rituals were added upon to uh, the shabrimala now uh, when we come to shabrimala temple there is also a, a story which associates it him with manikanda sami now who is manikanda sami is you know very uh, popularly it is all it, it is now uh, known manikanda sami was probably a, a boy of malayan lineage who was adopted by pandalan kings and he grew up to become a leader or commandant under them however due to resentment in the royal family he got estranged from them and returned to his clan so mani this is uh, this because of very popular serials and uh, things like that everybody knows that um, mani kandan uh, swami was you know taken by the pandalam family and some civilian he fell out with them uh, and they he got estranged from them and returned to the forest so this story is uh, known in many sources and um, the oral tradition the mural paintings his friendship with uh, swami's uh, you know manikandan swami's friendship with trader vavar sami and uh, the other privileges rendered to vavar's family by pandalan kings uh, lends an element of historicity to this personality called manikandan sami so it's it's quite possible that though we do not find direct reference into manikandan sami and his association with pandalam uh, family uh, there are other uh, uh, you know uh, evidences which can be which would indicate that there is some historical uh, truth in in the uh, in uh, this personality having actually existed Uh, there is no reference to royal family at pandalam before 17th century and hence the association of ayappa with this royal lineage may have occurred only during or after the 17th century and you, it is well known that during the 18th century you know the pandalam royal family was also uh, taken over by the the travancore dynasty especially by martanvarma so we, we there are many stories which relate you know in, in that area which relates to the, even the pandalam royal family itself they say that they have um, come over from tamil nadu in some invasions and um, so basically this particular tradition must have come from tamil nadu during some point of time during the uh, nayaka uh, period now um, the term ayappa Uh, associated with Shabrimala and Manikandan Sami is probably just an honorific desi- designation and, uh, uh, assigned to Manikandan Sami by the Malayan clansmen because the Malayans saw him in great respect because he had a direct uh, he was directly connected with the Pandalam royal family who uh, who had taken uh, you know uh, him as a or adopted him so he, because of this royal connection of manikanda sami uh, probably after his uh, departure from the palace probably uh, the malayans uh, you know started calling him as ayappa so the malayan community from which manikanda sami is supposed to have hailed basically followed non brahmanical practices of ancestor and spirit worship it's not only really this malayan community many of the communities which uh, were along the hills were actually all it worship and they had this practice of building small memorial temples for the deceased clan leaders and spiritual healers so after ayappa's death uh, or manikandan sami's death it, it is po- quite possible that the malayan community uh, built a temple in his honor with the assistance of probably the pandalam kings who he was earlier associated with so samuel mathur in his work native life from travancore cites that an oracle named uh, oracle of the malayan community Named Talani used to the Ayappa Temple at Shabri Mala. So Mathir says that the chief priest of the Ayappa Temple at Shabri Mala was a Talani, a person called Tana, Talani, who belonged to Malayan community. So uh, that is the first reference we get about uh, you know the tribals actually worshiping this idol at Ayappa. Now, though there are references to the temple of uh, Shabri Mala, uh, there is no clear mention of what that idol, how that idol in that uh, Shabri Mala temple look like. Now, it is stated by Samuel Mathur and also uh, in some other sources that uh, the Chogans who were there in the same area had a uh, drunken tussle with Talani, who was a priest of the Ayappa temple, and uh, 
uh, he was murdered by chogan so after the murder of chogan smallpox uh, you know uh, started spreading in the in, in amongst the chogan and which they believe was uh, been caused by the wrath of shasta the hill deity because he, shasta or the hill deity here is mentioned as shasta because he, talani was the chief uh, priest of ayappa temple at shabdimala so here uh, again shasta and ayappa club together in the, the description says that shasta the hill deity uh, caused uh, the smallpox in this community so as a remedy the chogans were asked to build a temple for tala uh, at talani's grave and install his high again so uh, uh, because chogans had murdered talani they decide to have an image installed and mathir uh, also reports of malayan community practices and ancestor worship and small dolmens with dolmens been erected with bronze figures of the deceased in it or sometime with a smooth stone in so uh, earlier also i had said that even in in parts of tamil nadu especially in nilgiris this tradition continues with uh, with some of the tribal groups there and uh, he also says malayan community following the tradition of having bronze figures or sometimes smooth stone installed into small dolmens which were built now uh, 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 despite all this the original temple in honor of manikandan sami or ayappa which uh, may have installed a bronze image or a simple stone like those uh, of talani and ancestors so uh, when uh, if malayan community uh, with the assistance of uh, the pandalan kings had built the original temple of uh shas uh, ayappa uh, or maniyanda sami at shabrimala it's quite possible that the original idol was of a bronze simple image or it would have been a simple stone image or uh, like uh, those built in those of uh, talani or other ancestors uh, followed by the tribal community now this is the uh, on the left you notice this is the image worship by aryans and uh, malayans and this is probably the image of uh, talani who was murdered by the chogans now it's not that uh, only the malayan communities had uh, idols of uh, you know their ancestors even today the padinaigans who reside in nilambur valley they have uh, you know idols of the one you see on the right is the idols uh, which are made in brass and worshiped by padinaigans which represent ancestors so some are male some are female but and they do worship uh, you know small images of uh, brass images of uh, their ancestors and it it is a continuing tradition even now so the earliest uh, you know shas uh, ayappa image uh, installed in the shabrimala temple could have been uh, you know something of the sort or it could have been a plain uh, simple uh, uh, stone now um, like uh, we've already noticed uh, you know those plain stones being worshiped in in pur region and here in patanandatta district also during the exploration by uh, dr ambli cs in patanandatta district she also noticed that uh, smooth uh, stones quite similar to the ones which we notice in pur uh, you know kept on a in a, on a pedestal in in, in ponchapara near uh, the temple at ponchapara and it was worship here you will notice that uh, coins are dropped and this is a blow off of this particular smooth uh, neolithic celt like looking object which is under worship at pochambara which is in it's along the hill ranges of the chabrimala hill ranges etc and apart from this uh, in the explorations uh, which was conducted by dr ambli Uh, they have found she has found many ruins of many tem uh, temples along uh, along uh, you know the and the hill uh, terrains which, which fall in the in the shabrimala hill range and uh, in all these only in, in the temples are all in ruins there are very small temples but uh, they are all in ruins but interestingly uh, no shasta idols or shasta images as we idols which you notice in stone has been found though there are Um, you know pedestals of uh, uh, noticed in, in amongst the ruins uh, no shasta idol has been found or ayappa idol has been found this clearly shows that these many of these temples may have actually just housed plain stones uh, in, uh, on this particular uh, basements and it must have been worshiped so if the plain stone is taken away and uh, you know uh, no remains of that sculpture would uh, 
uh, actually remain. So it could just merge with the local uh, stone. So uh, ruins of many temples have been uh, found along the, uh, the Patanandata in the Patanandata Rani district, uh, where Shabrimala is located. So some of these temples must have been dedicated to our ancestors, like those the Shabrimala, which was subsequently rebuilt uh, in the 17th century. Uh, Ayapa, as a protector of wild animals and as a hunting deity, gained popularity during the 18th century. And uh, Ayapa temple at Shabrimala attained mass popularity. So during 18th century, there were uh, two, three, uh, uh, you know, politically and socially very upheavals in, in, in Kerala. Uh, the first was, you know, by the end of uh, 18th century, we had uh, Tipu's invasion into, into Kerala. And also, uh, subsequently, the defeat of Tipu, and uh, then the whole of North Kerala passing on and so of the British, and subsequently, uh, uh, the Travancore dynasty coming into existence in, in uh, southern region, they uh, consolidating their position, and subsequently, they also, you know, joining hands with the British with the treaty, and uh, during uh, 18th century and uh, 19th century. Uh, because of the British arrival in, 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 the, in the Travancore territory, uh, survey work of different areas were started, and there was also, you know, the many, many much of the hill ranges which was there, which was early, you know, belonging to the tribal mass, and um, uh, these hill deities, they started slowly uh, encroaching into the territories of these particular, uh, you know, the hill regions, and bringing them under mass cultivation of. Various uh, tea, coffee, uh, cardamom, and such things. Large scale plantation work also was done. So, actually, um, during 17th and 9th, 18th and 19th century, there was actually mass uh, in, uh, you know, migration into these sort of hill ranges. And they were cutting down uh, the forest and they were also displacing some of these uh, in initial inhabitants. And there was a fear that they would include the wrath or, uh, or destructive powers of the hill deities. So that is how when Shabrimala slowly started gaining importance during the uh, uh, late 18th and 19th century, because people were migrating into that region and large areas being were brought under cultivation. There was also uh, uh, also uh, you know, migration of you know, different communities into that region. Uh, and um, uh, and they, there are also records uh, stating that uh, you know, people from all walks, uh, uh, you know, offering uh, material to the Shabrimala temple uh, through pilgrims who were actually visiting the temples. And uh, Shabrimala te uh, temple actually came in 1812. And um, uh, like I said, by uh, uh, late 18th century and early 19th century, uh, because of this constant, uh, you know, uh, migration into uh, the the, uh, the hill terrains of uh, Travancore, uh, there was also uh, constant migration, conversions of people were there, and there also, you know, the, 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 there was also fear of constant attack by wild animals also. And two, and it has been it is recorded that uh, Ayapa at Shabrimala was venerated uh, just to uh, keep away the attacks of wild animals and to uh, uh, wild animals attack against human and against their cultivation which was taking place. So that is one reason why Shabrimala temple suddenly became popular and as we know that there was also a ban on uh, other communities uh, uh, you know apart from the uh, higher communities could not uh, only gain access to temples the lower communities could not gain uh, access to temples till you know the uh, temple entry proclamation was declared in uh, uh, 1939 or so. So when this tribal deity uh, started uh, you know, becoming popular, uh, community com all communities which are moving towards this hilly terrains for agricultural and other activities uh, took a pilgrimage to these uh, Ayapa temple and this move because there was no because it was essentially a tribal uh, deity. There was no restrictions, uh, you know, about people uh, of any community visiting that, apart from uh, uh, a, a limited age group of ladies who could not visit uh, that particular uh, temple. 
but other com any community could uh, visit this particular temple so that is why uh, it gained popularity that anybody could visit this temple provided they uh, you know held up the stipulations that was uh, you know decided upon by the uh, tribal communities on with, on with this particular temple requested so um, uh, by modern corners reports it uh, this temple was already erected on a high platform with 18 steps so uh, this temple was essentially erected on a high platform uh, with 18 step and in the, in the step people who have visited shabriwala will know they are very steep and very very um, uh, uh, you know narrowly framed and the intention of that people who constructed this particular uh, temple on the platform was to see that elephants do not enter the premises and destroy the temple. So that was one of the reasons for keeping this temple at a um, highly elevated uh, uh, platform. And uh, once it was, uh, 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 temple was enlarged, uh, it, uh, a new image or a new idol was also, uh, uh, you know, installed into this image, uh, into this uh, temple which was getting renovated and which was becoming popular. Uh, a Sanskrit inscription on the base of the first Ayapa name Prabhagar Acharya crafted it in Kollam era 1085 corresponding to around 19, uh, 1910. That is the beginning, first decade of the 20th century. Only the first Ayapa idol was inside in, uh, in the Ayapa temple at Shabrimala. Earlier, um, uh, though there is a mention of the temple there, we, we have no idea about what exactly was the, uh, uh, how that particular uh, idol looked, whether it was a simple stone or a small image, like a brass image, like of the worship of uh, those of the ancestors which were worshipped by the Malayans. Uh, this particular, because I, I, as I stated earlier, people from different communities were actually moving to Shabarimala uh, to have worship of this uh, deity Ayapa. So when the first image was crafted, it's quite possible that uh, the artisan basically uh, was influenced by the late images of Buddha or Avalokiteshra from Kilur and uh, Nilambe Road, etc. And late Shai Shasta idol, which you notice with this yoga patta and things like that. So he seems to have been influenced by that. However, this first idol which was installed in, in this Ayapa temple was broken by um, screens in 1950. Uh, it was broken, the head was broken, the arm was broken, and uh, even the main sanctum sanctorum was defined. And um, uh, subsequent to this, uh, the temple was reconstructed uh, again, and a new idol was installed. So the current image is the idol which was installed after the renovation and uh, in 1950s, after 1950s. Now, uh, this is just to show that you know, what must have influenced the, the current uh, image, or which is a copy of the earlier image. So, Ayapa image uh, is basically seated on uh, a lotus pedestal, like the late Buddha images. And uh, um, in the Kiluru image, you basically notice he is seated in Jnana Mudra, uh, where you will see his right hand is held together in Jnana Mudra, uh, especially the Kiluru and, and Nilambiru images. Uh, this uh, this particular Jnana Mudra, which is noticed in, uh, in the you know the late Buddha images or probably Buddha images, has been changed to Vakhana Mudra in the Ayyappa idol at Shabrimala. So similarly, the Yoga Pata, which is uh, you know basically noticed uh, over the left or uh, 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 right uh, raised leg was actually uh, you know uh, placed over both the legs which were raised up and yoga patta was uh, found encircling it now he basically his left hand rests on his upraised uh, left knee and which is outwards and the right hand is held in Vyakhanam. Now, uh, these are two photographs. One uh, probably, these are, these are taken from the websites. Uh, so uh, basically, here uh, Ayapa is shown seated in Yogasana posture, seated on a lotus pedestal, uh, Yoga Pata with tied around both the uh, legs which are raised up and placed on the lotus pedestal. And um, uh, 
there are slight variations uh, in the in the images which were installed in 1901 and uh, the current one which is there in the, in the sanctum sanctorum and uh, this is basically the iconographical character of uh, iya pietals where she is seated on a lotus pedestal with both legs resting on the lotus pedestal and tied with a yoga patta the right hand in uh, in vyakhyana mudra and the left leg placed on the knee and extended forward so this is the idol if you notice in this character then he is not shasta he is basically ayappa so uh, shasta iconography you have noticed that how he is seated and what are the basic ornamentation the jatta mukada pat Uh, idol at Chabrimala. It is a karanda mukta or a or a, or a uh, you know or a crown which looks quite similar to the Nilam Virud Buddha images. The other ornamentations also which you notice, though some of them have been retained, but the karanda mukta is a feature noticed in Ayappa images. It is not like the uh, uh, the jata mukta which is noticed in uh, basically the the Shasta image. So uh, this is the basic difference. So. Uh, are always shown in this posture which uh, you notice here and uh, uh, shasta images are basically not noticed if the idol in the sanctum sanctorum is shown seated in this posture you can always uh, cite that these are temples which are dated to 20th century and the idol installed in in the a particular uh, sanctum is of ayappa because many many a times um, the shasta and ayappa nomenclature is you know uh, swiped and um, the temple is basically of shasta but they would call it an ayappa temple so these sort of uh, things have keep happening now uh, uh, like i said the first uh, ayappa uh, idol comes to be installed in shabdimala temple only in 1910 but there seems to be mural paintings of ayappa much older than uh, 1910 in mural paintings he is always depicted as a leader of a hunting team and or a deity of the hunters. So in all the paintings, he's shown as dark complexion person, possibly to no, notice his uh, you know, aboriginal uh, status. And he's seated on a prancing horse. And he holds the rein of his uh, horse in his uh, left hand and always has an arrow in the right hand. Sometimes in his left hand, in later images, you also know there's a bow. And at times he is shown accompanied by attendants and one of them holding an umbrella over his head. And his depictions in murals are always surrounded by forest scenes and hunting scenes. Now I go to some of the uh, representations of mural. This is from Irangur Mahadev Temple at Kolkata. You will notice him uh, riding a horse which is basically green in color, seated on the horse. Below the horse you see a netted enclosure. And within this are kept protected animals. Right hand always holds a arrow. This is from Vagamoli Temple. You show the uh, Ayapa is shown riding a horse here, and on the top you have a group of hunters carrying a uh, wild, possibly carrying a wild boar hunter. This uh, particular representation is from Chemendita Temple at uh, Trichur again. Riding a, a horse, reins sometimes in the left hand, right hand always as an arrow accompanied by his attendants. This prancing horse is always depicted with the four legs raised up, and below you have hunting scenes. Also on the top you have hunting scenes. This is a representation from Panyanarka Bhagavadi temple. Arrow in his hand, and the arrow has you know a peacock feathered. Upper end, horse either in white or green color is represented. Surrounding him are also forest scenes. There are deer, uh, uh, you know, tiger, and other animals. Below the horse, you normally have a representation of a man attacking a tiger. This is from Pandava Shasta temple in Kotem. And where you notice Shasta. Riding an elephant, uh, sorry, Ayapa riding a horse, and the person in Namaskara Mudra uh, showing his benevolence to Ayapa. 
there are also you know uh, forest scenes where you know a group of uh, hunters are there they are climbing onto a tree because of the leopard which uh, is noticed dogs attacking uh, the leopard an enclosure where wild and, uh, and you know domesticated animals are shown protected by shasta now this is the lower portion of, of the same panel of pandavan shasta temple you will always notice uh, below the horse will be represented uh, a rail uh, or a enclosure Wild as well as domesticated and animals under basically under the protection of Shasta. And below again we have a hunting scene: a leopard being carried by hunters on their shoulders, and a person attacking a tiger with a sword in his hand. So this, uh, uh, these representations: the wild animals in netted enclosure, uh, encounters with wild animals, either be the dead animals being carried, and uh, the person attacking a tiger with his bare hands and sword. is always depicted uh, with the iap panels uh, which i noticed in murals and uh, interestingly in pandav uh, temples you have uh, representation of both iap and shasta iap is shown on a horse which i showed you with only two hands and with a arrow in his hand but here in shasta is sh shown riding an elephant with four hands and the bow and arrow This is a very famous uh, representation from Pundriga Buram Temple. Shasta riding a horse, two-handed, with an arrow in his right hand, surrounded by various representations of forest scenes and as in wild dogs attacking boar, uh, killed boar being transported by uh, the hunters. Yeah, hunters even using guns to shoot down uh, boar such representations are found surrounding the ayappa panel this is from tali mahadeva temple kotem again riding a horse green in color and sometimes you notice a parasol above the head normally in hindu divinities uh, the parasol is not represented over the uh, the deity he they might show a halo around his head but parasol is not normally represented along uh, above the head of a deity so here in ayappa panels uh, when you notice a parasol above the head of ayappa uh, it also represent a uh, represent that he had probably attained some show, social status because a person uh, having an umbrella above his head uh, should have an elevated social status so it is quite possible that uh, ayappa because of his association uh, with the pandalam family uh, gets this elevated social status and that is why uh, ayappa uh, when he shown riding horse he shown uh, uh, with the parasol above his head and in the same panel in mahadeva temple also you have uh, boar being carried away So uh, that is how uh, Kittle says that uh, Ayappa had reached a border between uh, demons and uh, deities because uh, the, the, the swine which was earlier offered to Ayappa is no no longer being offered by around 19th century, early 19th century. So he is now shifting his stand from a hill deity or a hunting deity to uh, or demon deity to a personified. Uh, deity where he does not he is not he should not be offered uh, so representation again of a person the prayer rama temple the kudikanam uh, uh, temple again here you will notice that above his head a parasol is being held a group of people welcoming him after the successful hunt is uh, people around surrounding him also are there and below again you notice that A person hunting a tiger barehanded with the sword in his right hand, the arrow in his right hand, fully two arms with the right arm of the arrow. This is a very uh, late image, but a very colorful Im image of Ayappa from Udayanavaram Temple, Subramaniam Temple, photographed by Kumbodaran, and uh, this shows Shasta as usual, dark complexion, the hunter. 
with a bare hand killing a tiger and also a group of hunters on the top is represented and uh, the interesting aspect of this uh, thing apart from the usual bow in his right hand he is also shown with uh, both bow and arrow in his left hand which is also which also has a you know the reign of uh, this particular horse and uh, similarly he is also shown having a uh, you know a whisk with his right hand for the horse so and this representation is rather uh, typical where his right hand holds the whisk instead of a uh, arrow and both bow and arrow are held together in left hand so it's an interesting representation though did and similarly you notice that uh, uh, this is rather a rare a rare image of you know ifa on a horse and uh, you notice this particular figure uh, seated in front of the uh, you know mouth open similar thing is also noticed in painting so this appears to be uh, ifa but he seems to have even some characters of inr introduced him with especially the mustache though is not shown fierce nor is he shown with sword in his hand but he is again shown with an arrow in his hand and with his attendant figure so there are uh, a few uh, idols of uh, shasta uh, sorry ayappa riding a horse from shasta temples and uh, mahadeva temples you know this ayappa images is sometimes in good also uh, there is a rikaikunda mahadeva temple which is in kottayam in near kannur this has a subsidiary this temple has a subsidiary shrine where ayappa is uh, represented sitting on a horse and it is worshiped but again this ayappa uh, idol is also referred to as shasta similarly there is a temple in pangod in trivandrum city uh, again here ayappa is shown seated on a, uh, on a horse riding a horse with bow in his right hand uh, arrow in his right hand but again the temple is referred to as shasta temple so the uh, idol inscribed in the sanctum sanctorum is a horse riding ayappa the temple is popularly referred to as shasta temple and the whole area is known as shasta nagar so the you know despite all what is said and done uh, the nomenclature keeps baffling as to what the exact identity is so the concluding observation is shasta buddha and ayappa idols are uh, conceptualized with distinct iconographic traits fables were created to absorb popular non brahmanical deities like shasta and ayappa into brahmanical fold as part of brahmanization process shasta evolved to become harihara putra and uh, by creating the concept that ayappa is an incarnation of shasta or harihara putra or uh, ayappa is uh, manigandan swami is the son of hari uh, is son of hari and uh, ara Uh, or hari raputra himself so he to got ayappa also basically got assimilated into the hindu fold the paradoxical identification of shasta buddha and ayappa idols either either out of iconographical ignorance or intentional dogmatic polarization have today resulted in a whole series of debates and deliberations the guise and philosophy between deities are immaterial to at so let's see us the essence of god and religion is belief let the belief and wisdom of the believer reign supreme in the matter of religion thank you all loka samasta subhana bhav stay safe thank you sir thank you prasa kartigen sir Yes, it is time for clarifications, questions, additions, modifications, deletions, etc. Everything can be have, and uh, the participants are requested to put queries, as uh, already kind of Rachel work is suggested. You type your queries, and it will be forwarded to Sri Ajit Kumar. Anyway, Ajit Kumar, it is a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much, sir. The, the economographic point of view. But it requires, it requires more elaboration and uh, discussion in the public sphere of Kerala, because yeah. this idol is of wide importance, and uh, how it is uh, it differs from either Buddhism or the local tradition, etc. We have to further uh, inquire into. 
because uh, it uh, it is a part of our belief, social custom. So it is uh, intermingled with so many other because uh, yes, yes. Uh, different strata's of uh, migrations. Migration is not to, not to people as such, but the migrations of language and philosophy. Yes. Language and philosophy. This kind of migrations have taken place, and, the, and the, in that sense, Kerala culture is a composite one. Mm. A sort of a, a confluence of uh, various uh, belief systems, etc. And the rest, that may be the reason why we are large hearted enough. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for your wonderful presentation. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you, Professor Rajit Kumar. We have a query from Mr. Shankar Nair. Uh, thank you for the insightful presentation. Which period would you put the temple murals you showed? Temple murals are generally um, 18th century. 18th, uh, generally 18th century. There are also temples with 19th century paintings. So we have a few. 8th, 18th temples. century and 19th century. Oh. Huh? Uh, thank you, sir. Um, thank so you. we have a few comments regarding the presentation. Uh, that it's a uh, many people have commented that it's a very informative session and uh, about the detailed presentation and also Premier Bhaskaran has said really an opener presentation. Uh, we have another query now, which is thanks, Professor Kumar. It was very informative. Sociologist M. N. Srinivasan in his classic study of Kurks, religion and society among the Kurks of South India, documents that. They offered liquor and fowl um, to Ayyappa or Shastava as they call. And they believe that he inhabits the jungle and he wanders at night with his favorite pack of dogs. Curious to know if there are any Ayyappa temples in Kerala where non-vegetarian offerings are made. Also, if there exist different versions of Ayyappa in different places, when did Shabrimala emerge as the permanent residence of Ayyappa? that the devotees from different parts started coming to Shabrimala and not necessarily to other temples of Ayyappa. So there are two queries, sir. First is about the non-vegetarian offerings, whether they are given there in Kerala temples. And second is when Shabrimala became the uh, permanent residence of Ayyappa, where people came. Uh, Mathir actually, in his, uh, in his work, Native Life of Travancur, he says that after successful hunts, uh, the Ayapa idols or uh, you know uh, idols of ancestors used to be given beaten rice, uh, you know coconut, and also sometimes arak. That is mentioned even by uh, the sea. But the uh, temple after 1950, even up to 90 before 19, even 1936, um, uh, Krishna says that goats were sacrificed uh, before the commencement of the uh, annual pilgrimage to Shabrimala. But um, goat sacrifices has been done away. The, you know, the Shabrimala has been uh, done away with and all Brahmanical rituals have been introduced. So though uh, basically some of these things, some of the customs which are there in Shabrimala even still points to the fact that it's a tribal deity. Like for every new pilgrim who reaches Shabrimala is supposed to take an arrow with him. It is uh, deposited at um, uh, the Sh Sharangutti. So uh, arrow is what I said is the basic, uh, you know, uh, iconographic trait of uh, Ayapa. In he, he always holds an arrow in his right hand. So it is. And today, Chavrimala is the only temple where you you take, uh, you know, beaten rice, jaggery, uh, rice, and all these ingredients and uh, donate it to the temple. This is actually part of the tribal ritual. Uh, Iyer reports that it, um, uh, the, the tribals used to red, uh, dress in black, and they used to take, you know, they used to perform, uh, you know, stringent uh, say, uh, austerity measures from uh, uh, December to March, so that Shasta don't doesn't get annoyed. So the, these things which have come about 41 days, Vrata, which has come into uh, Shabrimala pilgrimage, has been taken from tribal rituals. The tribals were earlier following it. So that has been assimilated into, you know, uh, the people who go there as uh, pilgrims today. So it, uh, Shabrimala Ayyappa has no basic relation with whatsoever with, uh, uh, you know, Buddha as somebody stated. 
it's it's anti it is written and placed in records that the people used to show, uh, travel to uh, the forest because of fear of wild animals they used to travel in groups of 40 and 50 and it is also said that the you know by uttering ayappa uh, mantra they would keep away um, wild animals so that was the thing it is nothing to do with budham charanam gachami and uh, you know uh, the shabrimala pilgrimage the dress code is in, in it's borrowed from the tribal community there so there are so many things which is lingers in the cult today but uh, it's it's so you know hidden by layers and layers of myths and stories that you hardly know the truth and uh, fiction where it ends we have a short query which is the oldest buddha idol found in kerala from dr premlet bhaskar i i personally considered uh, the one from kayangulam which is now housed in uh, the uh, palace museum at kayangulam i think that is one of the oldest because it shows all the typical characters of the anradha buddha school which dates in 70th century sona shakti has uh... given a clarification to your question so the question i am asking is not connected to artifacts i want to know about kalameluthu is there kalameluthu done for ayappa i i don't think so kalameluthu is done for i don't know if it is reason. so many rituals have been introduced in uh, shabrimala over the years that it is is it is difficult for us to argue you know how those key things came to be introduced we wouldn't know somebody decides upon then they will call upon deva prashnam and then say that it was decided in deva prashnam so so many things have been introduced we don't know how these things came to be you know introduced in shabrimala is shabrimala is a, a temple is a very interesting uh, you know temple to study for uh, how uh, brahmanization and how rituals keep changing in hinduism so many rituals have been introduced and so many things have been introduced even the mantra which is written there in the front as tattva masi is it has nothing to do with the tribal temple complex initially it was all introduced later the harivara asana which is sung there it was introduced later later the abarna which is taken and adorned during it is also only in 70s that it was it was donated and it was seen. so rituals and shabalimala is rich you know rich in introducing rituals according to their fancies or earlier the temple was only open five five days in magara velaka now it is open for the you know the whole month or so so we have the next query it's from jinesh jills george sir you mentioned that the evidence for pandalam supremacy over shabrimala is only from 17th century so how can we conclude that the present temple was built by pandalam kings and not by malayarian sadu the temple ruins found by dr ambili dates even back to 12th century no the first, the first first thing is that uh, the temple ruins found by uh, ambili are not datable to uh, 10th century they are all uh, only uh, very late images there uh, no idol is found which could be dated the structural construction shows very flimsy sort of constructional methods they are all very 17th or 18th century uh, constructions only very late construction secondly the pandalam kings and their association he, he, uh, you know I, 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 as i stated the pandalam they are coming into pandalam as the main uh, you know area of their rule comes only in later part and he, because when warden corners reports this temple for the first time he, he already already says that there, that there was a temple which was raised on a platform it had 70 18 steps reaching to the top and things like that so even if you go by the preliminary structure Uh, you know the amount of effort that must have gone into making that particular structure uh, he uh, works as uh, established by cutting stone blocks by staying there and then working it because there is no habitation close by so a whole group of people going and staying there constructing that temple on that particular uh, platform or the raised platform would have required months and months of working and effort and malayalam community would not have been in a financial position to you know uh, build such a temple because uh, 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 earlier records say that they build small temples for the deceased ancestors they don't uh, mention of 
masonry work being largely used to construct temples so then definitely the pantalam kings must have helped all the tamil kings kings must have helped in you know uh, rebuilding the temple once it became popular because of the uh, people reaching out to you know, <coughs> the hill ranges sir next query is by vish kumar there are old buddhist images in tibet which are similar to the present sitting posture of ayappa throwing light on the buddhist influence how does this fit with the argument that the present depiction is of more recent origin uh, see some of the avalokiteshwara images you might notice them sitting in lalitasana and things like that only by sitting in lalitasana uh, you cannot you know call that image similar to ayappa i i stated that ayappa image in the ayappa image idol both the legs are raised on the platform tied with yoga patta uh, the right hand is in vakana uh, mudra so and the left hand is outstretched so if all these characters and karanda mukuta is there then you call that particular image but just uh, sitting in uh, lalitasana posture we cannot compare the idol as similar to ayappa installed in chavrimala iconographically they are they are two different characters so uh, the first thing we need to compare is with the immediate visit the kerala tamil nadu images or the ones which are noticed from sri lanka in sri lanka also we do not notice ayappa images as such but there are um, shasta images sir we have the final query from mr gopi krishna r so thank you for the great session it was a very it was very detailed and deep presentation the popular imagery of ayappa shows him seated on a leopard but the mural you have shown has him seated on horse can you say uh, about the difference was horse common in those times as to have such a representation no uh, uh... the image of ayappa having horse uh, uh, as his vehicle is to differentiate him from shasta that was the first necessity second thing ayappa as panikanta has an association with pandalam royal family he was supposed to be uh, you know even in the military services of uh, pandalam uh, kings so that is how he becomes associated with horse as such he so he is Uh, you know he has his royal connection so he is even associated with the ambarla which is shown above his head that is how he comes to be associated with uh, uh, you know horse as such now the tiger associated with ayappa in some of the photographs you will notice he is shown riding and all that this is actually no this is been this is uh, you know 20th century creation about ayappa uh, sitting on a uh, riding a uh, tiger no representations in painting occurs where he is shown riding a uh, tiger but uh, in one of the literary references he, he, it is stated that um, tigers are the dogs of ayappa that is it uh, that is how it is described so uh, we do not know that it is from these sort of things that uh, these sort of uh, imagery have come about that he and his association with pandalam royal family which says that he, he was asked to go and fetch uh, tigers milk and things like so it is from this story that he shown you know uh, he, uh, shown as represented on seated on a tiger but otherwise no representation in mural paintings show him riding a uh, tiger thank you i think we have come to the end of the question and answer session Uh, thank you very much for your patience for answering them um professor kartikeyan nair sir shall we conclude yes we can conclude uh, we can not it was a very wonderful presentation mr rajesh kumar thank you so much sir yeah, it is thought provoking about uh, light emitting than heat emitting it is more light <laughs> emitting <laughs> thank you so much as yes, it is a, a thought provoking presentation because we have to discuss in details the present uh, form of our worship etc and how it was uh, appropriate misappropriated in the sense appropriated by other sects yeah yeah past sect or the uh, tribal culture yes. or rebel cult was appropriated by others for their own sake for reasons yes. reasons yes. obvious reasons obvious 
anyway wonderful yes. thank, thank you thank you for your presentation thank and you. i thank all the participants who actively participated in it once again thank you all thank, thank you, you sir. sir thank you everyone thank you sir